Welcome back guys, I'd like to thank everyone for their kind words and contributions to the channel thus far. Fresh off the press, it's official, UberZ has arrived from the world of security to obscurity as an OG admin on a Discord. Members are already using our assistance to take their flippers to the next level, a fantastic addition hands down to the Discord. In other news, the results are in and the poll is unanimous. Bad USB will be the topic of today's session. And boy, do I have a treat in store for you today. So buckle up, turn up those speakers and let's go. go. The bad USB is a modern threat discovery that allows what appears to be a USB device to be weaponized and capable of immediately injecting malicious code into a computer or a system without being detected. Hack 5's original rubber ducky is the most well-known rendition of this. It was released over 10 years ago by Hack 5's Darren K and quickly became a hacker's favorite even appearing on Mr. Robot. There have been a few incremental updates since then, but the latest rubber ducky takes giant leaps forward with a slew of new features that make it far more versatile and powerful than before. What I love most about this device is that it bends the trust element on the HID and I quote, computers trust humans, humans trust keyboards, hence the universal spec, and ain't that true? Now I use the terms interchangeably from now on, but the bad USB takes advantage of the fact that a wide range of devices connect to USB connectors. The bad USB can transform a normal device, such as a USB thumb drive, into something completely different, such as a keyboard, network card, etc by altering the behavior of the USB microcontroller. An honorable mention at this point is also the work being done by Mike G on the OMG cable. And I gotta say OMG, hats off bro. So the question I get asked, is it enough to simply plug the bad USB device into a computer for the rogue device to execute commands? The simple answer is yes. And it can even inject malicious software and payloads without the owner's or system's prior acknowledgement or even consent. Bad USB attacks are dangerous because most antivirus and malware scanners do not have access to the firmware on the USB device and thus cannot protect the computer in the first instance. Having said that, that leaves any computer that can be accessed through a USB port potentially vulnerable. This is especially true for industrial systems where malicious code can be injected into critical devices simply by plugging in a USB device for a few seconds and it's game over. So, at this point, you might be wondering where the Flipper Zero fits into all of this. The Flipper Zero comes with a built-in bad USB module that can be used right out the box. What I like about the Flipper's bad USB element is how simple it is to use. Simply upload your payloads, plug in the device into a host, select the payload in question from the menu and execute it. Having said that, let's get into the first part of this practical demo and have some bad fun. Right guys, I'm back over to my Kali Linux box and this session I want to create a reverse shell that can interact with the Flipper Zero's bad USB element. So we're going to do that leveraging Metasploit. And for the uninitiated, Metasploit is a framework consisting of a various amount of exploration tools for pen testing and cybersecurity. So the attack type we want to leverage to get the ball rolling is the HTA attack type. So we want to type use exploit and it'll be a Windows exploit under miscellaneous and it's under the HTA server. So initially we want to set up a web server module within Metasploit that hosts this HTA file, which is essentially a HTML application. Uh, so when it launches, it executes a PowerShell payload of our choosing. So let's fire that up. So now we're inside the module itself. Now we want to set some prerequisites. So let's get our if config. So let's get our IP address first come in handy so let's first set our l host to be our ip address and then we can set the server's host address to the same ip address Next, we want to set the payload in this instance as Windows uh, 
interpreter. And then we want to hit a reverse TCP. Also, we have to set the L port or the listening port. And for this, we can choose either 44444 or we could choose 811111. There's loads of ethereal ports we can choose from this. We'll leave it as that. So we've set that. Now we want to show options just to make sure everything is in order. Perfect. Uh, now we can hit exploit to generate the server as well as the HTA payload. So now you can see here it started the TCP handler on our given port and IP address. Next, it's gone into starting the server for us under this IP address. So let's just take that. Now we have the HDA file. Let's name it something I can mess with. So we'll just call it ace for now. So we've got ace.hta and that is our malicious payload generated just now. Next, we want to start the Apache server. And the reason we want to do this is that we can host the malicious HTA file on that server and provide that link to a given victim. Real world, you could probably do this over Ngrog or even your own servers. But considering this is just a case study in principle, we'll do this within a sandbox environment and do it on my own local network. So we go to sudo services, Apache, and then we can start Apache. Just to confirm Apache started, we can go to sudo and then we can write instead of start, we can write status and that will show us that Apache is running. Now we have most of the prerequisites in place. We can head over to the victim's machine running Windows 10. Next, we want to check that the machine itself has security enabled because that's quite important here. So we have real time protection enabled and we have Windows Defender enabled. So the defaults are enabled. What I want to show you is that the script is that powerful. We can disable these baseline protection mechanisms to deploy our script. So we've established those two are active. Now then let's head over to the flipper. So if we go to the Q flipper right here and we go to the SD card, we'll go into bad USB. And now we, as you can see, I've got so many different <laughs> And big up the boy Jacoby here for his uh, repo on GitHub. Amazing work being done by him. I'm looking for the one. Here we go. The YouTube one. So we have here the Kali one that I produced for this demo. And we have a wake up one by UberZ, which I'm going to demonstrate later on in the video. So here is where the deployment is for the script. So... Now we'll head over to the device itself. All right, all the chess pieces are in place now and we can fire the script on our bad USB on the Flipper Zero. Let's go. And that's done. Now, First thing to note is I slowed that down on the script quite significantly. If I was to optimize that script to its maximum potential, there would hardly be anything on the screen to see. So that's the first thing to note. The second thing to note is I added specific elements to that code to turn off the security and antivirus that Windows Defender offers natively to Windows. So if we go into settings and then update security, Windows Defender, bam. That's the first thing you can see. It's already been turned off. The second thing on Windows Defender itself, it is off. 
All of that was done through the code, uh, and that's thanks to myself and Jacoby. Big up to Jacoby and all the work he's done on PowerShell. Amazing stuff. Definitely check out his channel. Next, we can head over to Kali Linux and see what exactly what we have to deal with. And then, bam. Don't you love it when it comes together? So, we have an active session within Kali Linux from this attacking machine to this victim's machine and what can we do with that we can interact with that session and we can just hit ls and there we have it it's game over we have full control of this pc and all of that was done through flipper zero essentially uh, leveraging on the great work that Hack5 has done on the rubber ducky scripts, but essentially it is the bad USB element on the Flipper Zero. So I hope you enjoyed that first practical session and we're going to head over to the second one. Now following that we have something a little lighter, a little more fun to end the video with. So I've always loved the original Matrix film, especially the opening scene with Neo sleeping at his terminal, which I understand all too well in real life. And now thanks to our hacking time OG Uber Z, he shared the same sentiment and wrote a nifty script to replicate just that on your own machine using the flipper bad USB element. So what should happen when we run this is that CMD is launched, the text changes green on the screen as you see in the movie scene and the script is typed out across the screen and if you have certain powershell dependencies in place you should also hear the beeps or knocks twice before exiting the code so it's a bit of fun uh, so let's see how that looks when we deploy it so there we got the wake up neo The Matrix has you. That's so cool. Follow the White Rabbit if you see my other video, you know where that's from. Knock knock, Neo. And it ends on the free beeps as well. So that's Uber Z's fun little tribute to the terminal scene of Neo cool stuff we can also take a quick gander at the code used by uber z in this instance so i'll add the url to this in the description below as a freebie so when we go into uber's code you have to be quite familiar with the ducky script but essentially there's a small delay it runs a command line under the run then it fires cmd then there's a string color with an echo off. Then it hits enter. There's a small delay and then the string, it starts writing the characters onto the screen where it says wake and then up Neo. This one was particularly nifty where it says this control home. So if you were to go into your own command line, type some rubbish on there and hit control home he actually clears that and goes back to the beginning so that's quite helpful especially when you're doing something like this and then it kind of repeats the process a bit and then it hits that last string for knock knock clears the screen again and then this was quite nifty with the beeps how he made that work and then it goes enter and then alt 4 just closes the window very cool from uber z i hope you like that as a little it's under his prank uh, directory i hope you enjoyed today's session and it gave you that spark that interest that knowledge to pursue more about the flipper and what it can do and how the code is working in the background and how we can interface with the bad usb aspects of the flipper i want to give a huge thank you to the community and their support and love for the channel thus far all the Hacking Time members that are active and learning from myself and Uber Z and more exciting news to come, of course. 
I can't forget to mention my boy Jacoby and how without his assistance, the Cali section would have taken a much longer to figure out. Jacoby is a PowerShell scripting wizard and I highly recommend checking out his channel and his GitHub repos for all things Flipper Zero and Bad USB. If you are interested in this field and having these type of gadgets in your arsenal, like I do, be sure to head over to Lab 401 where you can use our Hacking Times OG's name as the discount code to get some sweet deals off your purchases. Remember to leave positive comments below and if you can join the Hacking Time Discord and stay safe in the cyberspace, peace out.